I was dating a guy at the time and I wanted him to like me more and he kept asking for pictures of me. He kept saying, well, nobody will find out. You won't get in trouble for it. When the pictures were getting taken, I never thought they would end up on the internet. They were trying to charge me as a sex offender because I had sent the picture. I had sent it to another friend. I think the biggest problem about sexting is that people don't know the consequences. You can take a picture of yourself and it could go around to every single guy in the school. I think it's kind of shame really, because I think once you see how destructive sexting can be, and then you kind of pair that with how common it is, it, it's just kind of a wake up call. My name is Damian Washington. And I'm Katie Chung. Computers and cell phones have made it easier than ever for people to network. Facebook, MySpace, text messaging, and photo sharing make it possible for us to be connected. But they create risks as well. Some of these risks come from sexting. Sexting is a word that wasn't even a part of our vocabulary until recently. It means the electronic sharing of sexually explicit photographs, videos, or text messages, primarily through cell phones. Sexting is extremely common in especially my high school. The more that I've learned about it through getting educated about it, I see it more and more often. My friends do it, uh, my acquaintances do it, people I overhear of do it. Kira Murphy and Dylan Chase, high school students in San Diego, California, have been educating other students about the dangers of sexting. I've seen enough girls victimized by this issue and enough people just hurt by this issue that uh, I think it's kind of a responsibility of someone like me who's engaged in it and has had a lot of time to think about it and reflect on how it's wrong. It's uh, imperative that someone like me just kind of tries to educate other people. It's hard to know for sure how many young people engage in some form of sexting, but a recent poll suggests that it's around 30%. 30%? That's almost one out of every three. So why has sexting become so common? Well, one reason teenagers themselves cite is that they think it's funny. My name is Ben from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. It was pretty common in the school for guys to collect them and just put them on their phones and just show all everybody. Well, I think they sex because just to get a joke out of it, just a laugh or two. Reason two for sexting? Teens think their boyfriend or girlfriend will like it. I'm Autumn, and like my school and stuff, there's a bunch of girls that do it, and I think they just kind of do it, like for the same reason I did, like because they think the guy's gonna like them more. I think they think that um, if they don't send it to him, then he'll stop liking them, and he will want, not want to be with them anymore. I'm Marissa, and I'm 15. I think a lot of girls think that maybe other girls are doing it or other girls are being sexual and if they don't want to be maybe left behind or you know pushed aside for another girl then maybe they think that they have to send the pictures. That's a really huge problem how especially girls are seeing sexting as a way to get attention. More than anything these days kids are pressured and encouraged to be sexual and sexuality is something that's uh, something that's seen as sort of like a barometer for how cool you are you know. And with a guy, uh, the more girls that sex him, the more naked photos he has, he feels assured uh, as to somebody wanting him. You know, he feels like a stud and a player. Some guys get some status just showing all their buddies and joking around, laughing, looking at them. Just think it's a big joke. And they don't even really think about the girl's feelings at all or anything like that. Sexing isn't necessarily taking a picture, it could be forwarding a picture. And I think that's the major problem on the male side. They use it as a trophy and something to show off. And so when you think of it that way, um, in a girl's perspective, that's, it creeps me out. So sexting can be a joke, a sexy gift, a way to win over a boyfriend or girlfriend, a trophy. But there's another motivation, revenge. You may trust that you can safely share that picture or text with a boyfriend or girlfriend when things are going well, but the minute that big fight happens, your message may be forwarded to the world. Relationships aren't the longest lasting things in the world, 
and there seems to be a lot of tension after the breakup or it was a pretty nasty breakup. And so, you know, if you did do something that you regret, like send a picture to your boyfriend, they use it as a type of revenge and they're like, oh, look what she did while she was going out with me. It's a sad thing to consider, but you need to be mature and realize that your relationships in high school might not be permanent and consider those consequences before you do this. He kept asking for pictures of me in like my bra and underwear. He kept saying, well, nobody will find out. You won't get in trouble for it. So I just went ahead and sent it. And then he ended up showing it to like people on the bus and stuff. I felt betrayed in a lot of ways because he said he wasn't gonna tell and he ended up doing it. And I felt like everybody was gonna find out and that it would give me like a really bad reputation. It was kind of hard to like go through school and everything because people would come up to you and ask about it and you have to sit there and tell them, no, you didn't do it, but you did. Every person knows what it's like to make a bad decision. Elizabeth Schroeder is the executive director of ANSWER, a sexuality education organization at Rutgers University. Every person has experienced at some point saying something or doing something where even seconds or minutes afterwards, we thought, I really shouldn't have done that. Sometimes we can fix that. If it's something where we said something to a friend, we know we shouldn't have said it, we can go back, we can apologize. Sexting is different. Once it's sent, we can't take it back. We can't apologize. We can't take back the damage that's done once that picture of us is out there. Teenagers will make mistakes, it's part of life. Because of the technology that's coming out, it's permanent and it's kind of there for proof of your mistakes. So pictures that you post or text messages that you send are always going to be there. People could always save them and they can be on someone's cell phone forever. And it's not as easy as just erasing something because who knows like who the text message got to or who the picture got sent to. It creeps me out that you know, you can take a picture of yourself and it could go around to every single guy in the school and you'd get a really bad reputation. What you put out there is out of your control. You have no control over who will see it and you have no control over how they will use it. And once it becomes viral, it can spread really, really quickly. I understand now that it can get around fast. Like if you post on the internet, you could get around like all over the world and everybody could see it. Sometimes a picture, even one taken innocently, can come back to haunt you years later. About three years ago, um, I had a slumber party with my friends. It was summertime, it was hot, and we had been, you know, dancing around my room, having a sleepover, and we were taking pictures. Then this year, when everything was happening with the sex scene and all that stuff, we got a call saying that I was involved in the sex scene case. And my parents went and looked at the picture, and it was a picture of me and my friend in our bras. And I never found out how it got put on the internet. And I mean, I don't know how long it was on there, how it got on there. We kind of thought maybe it was from MySpace that maybe someone, you know, sent it to their phone or however they got it. We never really were told. Because sexting is relatively new, we're just beginning to understand the possible consequences of sexting on a student's future. We've already been warning young people about the type of profile pictures they put up on Facebook and other social networking sites, that if they think a really sexually suggestive picture is a good idea, if a college were to choose to go through and look up uh, someone on Facebook and saw that picture, could that negatively affect their admission to that college? Sure. Could it affect someone who's trying to get a job somewhere that this sexually suggestive picture was out there? Of course. I think we're all kind of connected to a network in some way, and we're all part of a huge grid, and once you throw photos out there, it becomes a part of your identity and it gets attached to you. So when people are going to hire you, when colleges are looking at your applications, uh, whatever it may be, when someone's researching you and they get a hold of this, it's gonna tarnish you. In some states, anyone who has a sexually explicit photograph of an underage person on their phone can be charged as a sex offender for possessing child pornography. I was in science class and I received a picture message on my phone and I 
opened it and it was the picture. The picture was just like the breast and it was, you could see the face on the girl and everything. And not really thinking, I just sent it to a buddy of mine. The vice principal called me up to the office and then he confiscated my phone. And then that's when I knew that something was gonna happen. I called my dad from the office of school and I told him what was going on and just what I'd done. I had gone down to the school and um, we had told that we had to report to the Falmouth Police Department that evening and we were going to speak to an officer there and a state trooper of Massachusetts. They told me that they were going to charge these kids as sex offenders and for child pornography. When these, all these charges came up, I was pretty worried and just scared because I knew that if I got charged as a sex offender, that would that would ruin my life. All I kept on thinking about was college, basketball, and when he was going to be an adult of those charges that would be behind his record. And it would follow him through the rest of his life. And I thought about where would he get a job, who would hire somebody as being child pornography and as a sex offender. And I never thought that I would get in this much trouble for just sending it to a buddy of mine. All happened so quick, it was just supposed to be a little joke. And it turned into a bad joke. To all the guys that don't think they're gonna get caught, that's pretty much what I was thinking, and I did get caught. Charges against Ben were eventually dropped after he stayed clean for a number of months. But other teenagers have been far less lucky. Even if the person sending the picture is a friend or someone you're dating, the laws in some states say that both the sender and the receiver of the picture can be charged as sex offenders. Once somebody is labeled a sex offender, they need to register as a sex offender. This can affect their academic life moving forward, their professional life. In some communities, they have to go around and introduce themselves in the community as a sex offender. So what are the lessons that we all need to learn? First of all, you can avoid a whole lot of trouble by not sexting in the first place. Among other things, this means that if someone is pressuring you to send a photo, you have the right to say no. If he's trying to pressure you into sending him pictures and stuff, he's really not worth being with at all because it's pretty much like he's using you. I just think that you should be confident with yourself and you know, know that if a guy really likes you, he's not going to need a picture of you or things like that. I mean, he'll like you for you. Uh, my only advice to other guys is that if you're interested in a girl, don't pressure her to engage in sexting. Uh, and just go about it the normal way, you know, because ultimately your peers are going to respect you more, I think, uh, if you don't end up abusing a girl like that. And while it might seem cool in the short term, it really isn't. It's sleazy and pathetic and really just mean-spirited. What if you have sent a sexual image or text and regret it? The first thing to do is to ask whoever received it to delete it. How you ask can make a difference. Downplay it significantly and just say, hey, you know what, I sent you that picture. I'd really prefer if you deleted it. I'd feel more comfortable with that. Anything that somebody puts out there to say, this is a really big deal, gives power over to the other person. If somebody knows that they have power, especially as an adolescent or teen, they're more likely to hold on to it and say, oh, why is this such a big deal? Okay, I should probably hold on to it. So to go to someone and say, especially a boyfriend or girlfriend, and say, listen, I don't feel comfortable. Please delete the photo. In the end, it's up to that person to delete it or not. But what if a person refuses to delete it? The next step would be to tell an adult, someone you know and trust. Ideally, that should be a parent or a caregiver. Now, when I've suggested this to teens, the first reaction is, I can't tell my parents because I'm going to get into trouble. What I will say is parents want people to be safe. They want their kids to be healthy. So while no parent on the planet will jump for joy because their teen sent an explicit picture to somebody else, their goal is to make sure that that picture does not go beyond that person. So it can be very helpful to get an adult involved in helping with this. Talk to somebody you trust. You know, go to that coach that you trust or that teacher that you really get along with that you feel comfortable talking to. And I think it's really important for everybody to have somebody that they can come to with um, issues like this. What if rather than sending an explicit photo or text, you receive one? Erase it right away. Don't send it to any friends. And I would just delete it. 
And if you feel like someone's being abused and you're getting pulled into that web, I think the right thing to do is report it to someone. Or at least, uh, it sounds corny, but just tell an adult, you know, and get some advice. Why tell an adult? Because you need to protect yourself. The reason for this is, if it ever came back that you received a sexual text or a sexual photograph and you kept it on your phone, in some states the law is looking to prosecute you as a sex offender as well, even though it was your friend or your boyfriend or girlfriend who sent you the photograph. So the best thing you can do is delete it immediately, do not forward it on to others, and make sure that somebody you know well and trust knows that you received it and that you deleted it. So what else can you do? For sure, you can tell whoever sends you a sex that you don't want it. And if they persist, you can block the sender on your phone or your computer. Finally, when it comes to sexting, you can set an example. The best thing is to lead by example and to just be like, hey, that's not cool. Or, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. And, you know, believe it or not, like, people are going to listen to you when you stand up for something that's right. So that's it. That's our program. Remember, once you hit send, that photo or text may be out there forever. You have no control over who sees it. You have no control over how it's used. So before you decide that sexting is funny or cool or romantic, think carefully, really carefully, about the possible consequences. 